सब्सक्राइब करिए शॉर्ट एंड डिक्टेशन चैनल को और दबाइए इस बेल आइकन को ताकि आपको मिले लेटेस्ट अपडेट्स बी रेडी फाइव सेकेंड्स स्टार्ट The planning commission has made various estimates about our resources and they are based on a great deal of thinking and calculation nevertheless they depend on so many uncertain factors a person who is more optimistically inclined may make a better estimate better in the sense of more hopeful estimate while a pessimist may make a less hopeful estimate nobody can challenge it for my part i have an invincible feeling that in the final analysis the resources of india are considerable in our people's capacity ability and energy and the question arises how to reach them and how to tap them to the best advantage i think this can be done by the realization by the people themselves that it is worthwhile doing so by their full cooperation and the like i can never be done by government decree or by an order from above therefore it becomes important that our people should realize and understand fully what this process of planning is therefore we try to a considerable extent to get the cooperation of as many people as possible even at the district level apart from a large number of groups of various kinds i think it may be well said that india is very conscious of planning today i was reading a foreigner's book the other day in which he says that in india you cannot get away from this planning business he had written it in slight irritation whatever you talk about somehow they lead you to the question of planning as though everything depended on planning elsewhere well whether his irritation was justified or not i was glad to read that a person with no great sympathy for what we were doing felt enveloped by some kind of an atmosphere of planning everybody can talk of planning of course everybody who talks of planning may know very little about planning that is not the point but it is true that india is very much planning conscious and i think it is a great gain when i say planning conscious i mean of course planning conscious in the democratic structure that we possess that is we are proceeding with democratic planning i am not criticizing any country that may not plan or any country that plans in some other way authoritarian or some other way it is none of my business to criticize other countries they have to meet their problem and it is up to them to decide how to meet them they can judge their own people but so far as we are concerned in this country people believe that we should endeavor to plan by the democratic method planning in a small way has often been done and is often done elsewhere planning in a really big way has thus far only been done more or less by the authoritarian approach and the question arises how far a an authoritarian and democratic approach can succeed in this kind of planning i believe it can not only that i believe it can ultimately succeed better not perhaps in yielding such great results quickly but laying a surer foundation and more effective foundation not only for plant growth but for the type of society which we wish to develop in this country now 
we talk about the future in terms of socialist pattern of society and that we can interpret it, interpret it in a variety of ways. I would beg this house to try to consider these great problems without using as far as possible words which have an emotional connotation because then it becomes a little difficult for us to argue about the real thing. We want a society in this country where there is equality, where there is social cohesion, where there are no firm classes separated from each other and where there is an opportunity for every single individual. Naturally, how far an individual takes advantage of that opportunity depends a great deal on that individual, on his physical or mental or spiritual or whatever it is make up because everybody is not alike. It is obvious that everybody is not either mentally or physically alike, but we should always ensure the same measure of opportunity to everyone. Now, it is not enough to say that we shall ensure the same measure of opportunity if the measure of opportunity is so low that there is practically no opportunity. If then, it does little good to say that everybody is getting the same measure of opportunity. It is not much good saying that everybody has the same measure of opportunity on poverty level because that means lack of opportunity to everybody. Therefore, in order to give that opportunity, we have to give something to them. That is to say, we have to get out of poverty and lack of opportunity. We have to produce wealth because not out of that, but we can produce the things that are necessary for people to have that opportunity we crave for. So, it comes round to our proceeding the things that we require. When we use the word wealth, of course, there is no significance except in regard to the physical things that we require, whatever may require, whatever it is food or clothing or housing or hundreds and thousands of other things that are necessary. Education, health and all that are the things that we require and what we want to place before everyone. How do we do that? There was considerable argument about a year ago about what was called physical planning and financial planning as if there was an inherent contradiction between the two. Many people thought that the use of this term physical planning was dangerous and was meant to turn out approach in a wrong and harmful direction. Now, I do not understand how there can be any planning of any kind without physical planning. Obviously, whatever you may plan, you have to plan for the goods, you have to plan for the food.